with you. Did boss tell you anything about me borrowing the back room tonight? Yeah, he left the key here for you. Thanks. Don't be in there any longer than you have to, will you? Boys want to get a stud game started in there. Well, I won't hold them up any longer than I can help. Just a second, stranger. You know if there's any first-class fighting men in this here cow town? Well, there used to be, but I think they've all joined the Marines. You look like you ought to be sort of a scrappy yourself. Me? Yeah. <laughs> I should say not. The only reason I wear a gun is to keep out of fights. Say, your name doesn't happen to be Graves, does it? It ain't Graves, but it's the next thing to it. My name's Coffin, John Coffin. I hail from Skeleton Creek. That's in the funeral range, the other side of the Death Valley. Up yonder, folks call me the Undertaker's Delight. And I am without a doubt the toughest... Hey, Mike! Hold this fellow off, will you? He's scaring me to death. Tim Condon? Yes. You see, you got my letter all right. I did? If your name is Graves. It is. I'd rather nobody see us together than as if you decide to accept my proposition. Condon, I'm looking for a man to tackle a job that's liable to be mighty dangerous. Are you open to such a deal? Well, it depends. What's the job? No. There's a range war all ready to bust out up my way. And I want to stop before there's a lot of bloodshed. Well, that's a pretty tall order. What's the trouble? Same old story. Cattle rustling. Somebody is beating the district dry. Are you one of the heavy losers? No. No, I'm not a rancher. I'm a commission agent. Buy and sell cattle. Where are you figuring it out? Well, it's uh, rather curious, huh? Well, I hold a note against one of the biggest ranches in the district. Owned by old man McLean. If he loses any more cattle, he won't be able to pay up. I'll have to take the ranch or protect myself. What's the matter? Don't you want the place? Well, not if I have to get it that way. McLean is one of my best friends, and he's too old to start all over again. Well, that sounds pretty white of you. But, uh, where does this range war come in? McLean thinks he knows who's back of the rustling. And if he loses any more cattle, he's going into action. Who does he suspect? The Brennan boys. But he's wrong. Both ranches have been losing cattle, and each one suspects the other on account of an old family feud. Where are these ranches? Hatchie Basin. North of here, about four days' ride. But I'm beginning to be afraid that the war might start right here in San Mateo. That's pretty far from home, isn't it? What makes you think that? Well, men from both ranches are drifting into town. Why, I can't guess. Unless there's trouble in the wind. 
How many men? Who are they? Four so far. One of them is Bob Brennan. He's the youngest of the two brothers. There's two of his punches here, too. A fellow named Pinto Carew and another one they call Rawhide. Yeah. What makes you think there's going to be trouble when these men are all from the same ranch? Oh, but McLean's foreman is here, too. Now, they either followed him here or he followed them. What's his name? I never heard him called anything but peg leg. A one-legged cowpuncher? Yes. Well, it all sounds very interesting. Yes, I'll throw in with you, Graves. Right. And now about the pay. You satisfied with the terms of my letter? Seems fair enough. Good. I'll probably see you in a few days at Apache Basin. But don't recognize me. Right. Goodbye. And good luck. So long. Somebody slaps you to sleep right here. What's the matter with your friend here? Oh, he's been drinking war paint and he wants to fight a duel. I'm betting two to one there ain't a man in the house. Give me ten minutes to prove it. Your money back if you lose. And there ain't none of you got nerve enough to take me. Your call. You wouldn't fool a one-legged stranger, would you, mister? I don't fool. I was mistook, gents. There is one man in town, besides me. I reckon I better tell you who I am. I know. You think you're John Coffin, the undertaker's delight. And you really use that hardware you're packing in your hand, or you just talk a good fight? You'll come out in the alley, I'll demonstrate. Where are you fellas going? This is a private fight and you stay out of it. You came out here to fight. Shucks, no. I was just looking for someone you weren't afraid to fight. Come on, I'll tell you all about it. find it. Who's they and what are they looking for? First off, where are you from and what's your name? Well, I'm from a lot of places. My name is Tim Condon. You any relation to old Tim Condon that used to be with the Rangers? He was my father. That's all I need to know, son. You're hired. Wait here. I'll call to see what's in the way.
And that's what they was hunting. Upwards of $9,000. I want you to take this and head for the McLean Ranch in the Apache Basin. That means four days of hard riding with your eye peeled and your pistol cocked ever full of the way. Why don't you take it yourself? I've been trying it for two weeks, but they won't let me get out of town. Now, who are they? Them polecats from the Brennan Ranch. I've been stuck up twice. Look at this room here. No, sir. The minute I leave town, they'll be down on me like a weasel on a hen house. What do you want to carry the cash for? Why don't you get a cashier's check? There ain't no bank in Apache Basin, don't you see? No. It's got to go in cash, and somebody's got to take it they don't suspect. That means you. All right. I'll do it. Go ahead. I'm counting on you, Tim. If old McLean loses his place, I reckon it'll just about finish him. Just a minute. What are you doing? I'm just copying the numbers on these bills. In case I lose them, no one can pass them without getting caught. Well, tie me down. Say, I never thought of that. There. We don't have to take this to Apache Basin. Because the man McLean owes the money to is right here in San Mateo. How do you know? Never mind how I know. Here, you keep this while I get him. You can pay him off right here without any risk at all. All in strangers, you're covered. Get your hands up away from your gun. Wasting your time. I haven't got anything on me worth taking. Look out, Tim! He hasn't got it. Search Pegleg. Here in a Sounds like it's all over. Let's go see. Get back inside! All of you! Say, some of you fellas go and get the sheriff. fight a duel with who? Well, Tim Carnan and a one-legged cowboy from up country, they went out in the alley. Well, why didn't you say so? Well, I'm glad you came, Sheriff. Someone killed Pegleg Sanderson. You're just kind of out of your line, ain't it, Condon? What do you mean? Fighting duels with cripples? We didn't fight any duel. I didn't have any gun. No? What do you call that thing you got in your holster? Oh, I just picked that off the ground. Easy there, Condon. You're under arrest. Well, you don't think I killed Sanderson. I heard enough of that. That's the body inside, and I'll take this man to jail. Yeah, but we haven't got a 
chance of getting him now. The son of a gun's riding my horse. Uh, right, he'll come back. Thank you. I've got a letter from Pegleg, honey. He's got the money. Hey, what else does he say? You're shaking so, I can't read it. Says he hasn't dared leave San Mateo with it yet. Bob Brennan and a couple of his men keep trailing him around, waiting to take it off him. Oh, Dad, I think you and Pegleg imagine things. They wouldn't do a thing like that. They wouldn't? <laughs> They've already tried it twice, but he didn't have it on him. Here, you take these. I'm going to town and tell Graves. Well, Dad, you can't now. Dinner's on the table. I'm too excited to eat. I've got to see Graves. Come on, Curly. Come on. Come on. How to do? Is this the McLean Ranch? Why, yes. Is Mr. McLean at home? Oh, he just left the town. But if it's work you're looking for, we're not hiring anyone right now. I'm not looking for work. I had some news for him from San Mateo. News from San Mateo? Mm -hmm. Oh, you mean about Pegleg and the money? Well, Daddy knows about that. He received a letter from Pegleg this morning. I don't think we're talking about the same news, miss. Where will I find your father in town? He's in Mr. Graves' office. What is it? You don't mean something's happened to Pegleg, do you? Well, I guess I've said a little too much to stop now. Pegleg was killed four nights ago and robbed. Pegleg? Dead? Oh. Well, I, I'm sorry I had to break the news to you that way, but I... Oh, that's all right. I would have found it out sooner or later. Do they know who did it? They think I did it, but I didn't. That's why I came to Apache Basin, to find the man who did and clear myself. Do you know who did it? Well, not exactly. But everything points to the Brennans. The Brennans? Mm. Oh, if they did this, I ought to be stamped out. The whole tribe, root and branch. How did it happen? Pegleg hired me to help him bring some money up here. We must have been watched because I was jumped by two men in the dark. We fought. I was knocked out, and when I came to, everything was over, and I was under arrest for the killing. I hate to think what this is going to mean to Daddy. You mean the loss of this ranch? I mean the loss of the only friend he had left. A funny little one-legged cowhand who stuck by him when all of this deserted. The man that was killed fighting for him. Of course, the ranch means a lot to us, too. You see, Dad and his brothers were born here, and their fathers before them. Three generations of us that built this ranch lie over there under that sycamore. It would be like selling the ashes of our ancestors. Do you think your father would accept me in Pegleg's place? Is his friend and yours? I came here to clear myself of a murder, but I'd like to stay and help you keep this ranch. I'm afraid it's too late for anything like that. I'm not so sure. I don't think it's in the cards for people to lose what's rightfully theirs. I got some funny ideas on that subject. Well, goodbye. I'll see your father in Mr. Graves' office.
way. Hi, boss. Hi. You fellas finish your business in San Mateo all right? Hardly. Why didn't you report to the ranch then? Ooh, been riding four days and just got in a minute ago. Now look me up before you start for home. Might be better not to say anything about us being in San Mateo, Brennan. Pigleg Sanderson was killed down there the other night. Shot? Hmm. Folks might suspect things if they knew two of your punches were there at the time. With your brother. Even if we are innocent. So that's where that fool's been, huh? Working undercover. Hmm. I'm glad you told me. I came in to ask you what the full amount of the note is that you hold against the McLean place. There's something over 8,000, I believe. Counting interest in everything. Why? I want to buy it. You want to buy it? Yep. <laughs> Bob, I don't know what to say. He needs money. I knew it was him that got it. But as badly as I need the money, I couldn't sell it to you of all people. What do you mean by that? No, I didn't mean any offense, Bob. But it's no secret that the Brenners and McLeans are at war. Well, that's no fault of mine. Well, I'm not saying who's to blame. I'm simply saying that I can't sell him out to you. You've got to. I'll make it worth your while. I'll pay you a bonus and a good one. Oh, I'd like to accept, Bob, but I... Here's McLean himself. We let him decide. Hello, Graves. Hello, Hi. Leon. Hey, I'm glad you're here. You were just in time to settle an argument. Young Bob here wants to buy your note from me. So the Brennans want my note. So they can foreclose on me. Run me out of the valley as their father always swore he'd do. That's not the reason, Mr. McLean. I, tell I don't care to hear your lies. You've always wanted my ranch on account of the water. You bragged that you'd get it someday, but you won't. Even if you got the note, you couldn't foreclose. Because Pegleg's coming in with the money to pay it off. Pegleg's not coming with any money. He's dead. That's a lie. He's not dead. He can't be. He was shot over in San Mateo four nights ago. Sorry, Mr. McLean, I didn't mean to hit you so hard with it. I was trying to tell you that well, you've told him too much already. But I... Well, go on and get out before you do any more damage. Pegleg had raised the money to clear the ranch. Now... Now he's dead. It was the Brennans that killed him. And I leave him the score if I swing for it. Oh, easy, John. Nothing you can do can help him now. I know. I know. That's what hurts, so. I hear you, 
good looking for me. Yeah. So what's the idea of pulling out and leaving me to run the ranch alone? Why not? You've always wanted to suit yourself anyway. Give an account of yourself. Where have you been? I've been in San Mateo, watching Peg Leg Sanderson get murdered. You're still about that, you fool. Sit down. And don't talk so loud. What I've got to say it won't take long enough to sit down. Suit yourself. What's on your mind? Late, we're through. I'm pulling out for good. Pulling out? Yeah. I should have done it two years ago. I have known what kind of a place you were making out of the ranch, but I wouldn't let myself believe it. I can't fool myself about what I saw in San Mateo. What do you think you saw? I saw Peg Leg murdered in cold blood by two of your hired gunmen. Well, if you weren't my brother, I'd blow you out of your shirt for saying that. If I wasn't your brother, I'd invite you to try it. I'm sure Mr. Graves will do everything he can to help, rather than foreclose on the ranch. Why, certainly. I'd only do that as a last resort, to protect investments of my own. It's no use. Peg Lake was my last hope. I'm not so sure. Now, the price of cattle is going up. Doesn't take many head to make a thousand dollars. That don't mean much to me, the way my range has been rated. Well, they couldn't have got all your stock. And a couple of hundred head would pay off half what you owe. Half won't do any good. Graves needs it all. If we can raise half the amount, I know a dozen banks can take that note off Graves' hand. You couldn't hire enough punchers for a roundup. They're all afraid of the Brennans. Well, it wouldn't hurt to try. Unless you're afraid of them, too. Me? Afraid of that gang of cattle stealing? Now, that's the talk. We can just find some more that feel the same way. You know, Graves, that young fellow's liable to start something. Yes. He is liable to start something. I wouldn't go in there if I was you. Is that a threat or a warning? A warning. A friendly one. Thanks. in the market for a job? I want about a dozen cow punches for a quick roundup. 
How long is your job and how much do you pay? Pay you two weeks' wages for five days' work. You can count me in. Don't be too quick about taking this job. It may get you in trouble. Who's the roundup for? For well, the McLean Ranch. Why? McLean? My McLean's all through in this valley. There ain't gonna be any roundup, Condon. I know why you're here and what you're trying to do. This man ain't a cattleman. He's a range detective hired by McLean to come here and frame my brand. If you join him, you'll be in a range war with a Brennan spread on the other side of the fence. Any of you feel like taking on a contract like that? It begins to look as though some of the stories I've heard about the Brennans are true. I don't know what you heard, but I'll tell you one thing. McLean's all through an Apache Basin. I guarantee that personally. John McLean's liable to be in Apache Basin long after you've left, Brennan. Because you might leave feet first. It ain't safe to declare war on my outfit without a gun in your hand. I don't think I have to be afraid of anyone who hires a couple of gunmen to murder a one-legged cowpuncher in the dark. I... Hold it, you two! Well, the job's still open if any of you fellows aren't afraid to take it. What all was shooting for? Just had to take a shot at one of your citizens. There's no harm done. Give me a gun till I find out what it's all about. Now, no offense, Sheriff, but I'm a little superstitious about turning my gun over to strangers. But if you'll be good enough to come over to Mr. Graves' office with me, I think everything can be explained to your satisfaction. Here's your gun. Mr. Graves, I wish you'd tell the sheriff why I happen to be in Apache Basin. Oh, yes. Uh, this is Mr. Connor from San Mateo, Sheriff. Uh, I hired him to come up here to help get at the bottom of the rustling in the valley. Come inside and we'll talk it over. Are you saying you outdrew Brennan and shot him? Well, I was just lucky, I guess. Knocked the gun out of his hand. I'm afraid you're not going to get a crew out of those cowpunchers over at that saloon. John, it seems like you must know some old timers that are right with you. I may round up a few. It's worth trying anyway. Well, I'm heading for the ranch trying to catch a little sleep. I've been on the saddle for four days. Bye, Graves. So long. So long. looks of that. Let me have that money. Come on, let's do it. Come here. I told you fellas to report as soon as you got back. Now you have cost us about $9,000. Young Brennan has got peg legs roll and left town with it. Young Brennan did have peg legs roll, but not now. How did you get it? Oh, never mind that. You get that in your safe out of sight. And listen, Graves. That fellow Conan you brought in here is going to make us plenty of trouble. Bringing Conan in here will cheer me of anything, as people ever get suspicious. Now, how could anyone suspect me when I pay my own money to bring in a detective? Yeah? 
Unless he gets chummy with the Brennans and finds out he never stole a cow from McLean's in their lives. <laughs> Fat chance of that. After what he did to Leif today. Connor's got the Brennans half one over already. What do you mean? The last thing we saw of him, he was picking Brennan up from the road where we left him and taking him home for repairs. If that doesn't lead to something serious, I miss my guess. You and your mastermind ideas. Will you fix up a place inside where we can put this man? He's pretty badly hurt. What do you mean by bringing him here? Don't you know who he is? No, I don't. Well, he's Bob Brennan, and I hate him worse than any of his tribe. What's he done? Well, I trusted him and sent him to San Mateo to follow and protect Peg Leg. And instead, you know what he did. I think maybe you're wrong about this fellow. He went out of his way to help me in town in a shooting scrape with his brother. The least we can do is patch him up and hear what he's got to say. Well, now suppose you try to tell us what happened. Well, I don't quite remember myself. I was riding out here with the money that I got from Peg Leg, and all of a sudden something hit me on the head. I seem to remember somebody going through my pockets. How did you get Peg Leg's money? I was in the alley when he was shot. I ran off the killers. I didn't know whether you could be trusted or not, so... While you were unconscious, I grabbed the money and headed for Apache Basin. Too bad you didn't take it straight to grave. I did. I was trying to buy the note when Mr. McLean came in. I tried to explain it to your father, but he wouldn't listen to me. He was so upset when I told him about what happened to Peg Beg that I thought the best thing to do was to bring it out here and let you explain it to him. Did you recognize the men that killed Peg Leg? Well, I... Hello, Daddy. What's he doing here? I found him wounded and brought him here. You brought a Brennan into my home? Well, get him out of here. I don't think you understand, Mr. I understand all I need to understand. Get him out! Please, Bob's been trying to help us. I even sent him to San Mateo to help Peg Leg. You put a Brennan on Peg Leg's trail? And then you killed my friend just as sure as if you'd fired the shot yourself. Oh, but Dad, please let me explain. I... It's no use, Jeanette. I'll go. If you let this man go without a hearing, I don't think you need my help either. I've got along a good many years without your help, Condon. I'm sorry. Dad, we can't let them go like this. We mustn't. Well, what does a fellow do in a case like this? I don't know. I suppose you'll be pulling out. Not if I could find enough cop on just to stage a roundup. You mean you're still going to try to help that stubborn old fool? He's got a daughter worth helping, hasn't he? But I can't see that we can do anything without riders. Now, if I only hadn't broken with my brother today, we could have done a lot of things. Say, there's a half a dozen boys on our place that are honest, and I think they'll take orders from me. <laughs> That'd be a hot one on McLean, rounding up his cattle with Brennan's cowpunchers. It'd be just as good a one on my brother. <laughs> John, I wouldn't do this if I just didn't have to. I know. Tell me that.
What's the word? It's bad. It rounded up well over a thousand heads. Are you sure they're all McLean brands? Oh, positive. They're on the way to the loading chute for them now. And we better get the boys together and stampede them while we've got a chance. They'll let her do the trick all right, but it's too crude. I've got it. Those cattle are stolen. Stolen? Why not? They're McLean cattle. Brenner and his punches are driving them. Wouldn't the law call that rustling? Sure. But they can explain it before. This fellow Collins is a fine specimen to bring in here to stamp out rustling. Look what I just got through the mail. What's it all about? It's a circular letter from the sheriff of San Mateo. Collins wanted for the murder of Pegleg Sanderson. <whistles> got any idea where I can find him? I can tell you more than that, Sheriff. These two men just came in with a story that I couldn't believe. Now it looks like it's true. Well, speak up, what is it? Well, they say that Conan and a gang of Brennan punchers are leaving the country with every head of McLean cattle left on the range. What? Why didn't you fellas tell me about this? We well, want to get Mr. Graves' advice first. I'm the law in this town, not Graves. Get a posse together while I get settled up. When you get out there, find some way to stampede that herd. McLean cattle there to pay off that note and some left over. Yes, and we'll have them at that ranch in plenty of time for the sale, too. Hey. That looks like a sheriff's posse. I wonder what's up. Let's find out. Hand me that gun. What's the meaning of all this? Condon, you were under arrest for killing Pegleg Sanders. But he didn't have nothing to do with that. I was there and saw it all myself. Your word don't mean a thing. You're under arrest yourself. Get on down and take a look at that herd. I'll keep these men here till you get back. What are you holding me for? We got word you were rustling McLean's cattle, and this looks as though the story was true. Who told you we were rustling McLean's cattle? Graves. But those are McLean's cattle. We're taking them to his ranch. When Brennan punches a caught herding McLean cattle, it don't take a Ouija board to know they're being rustled. You say Graves told you we were rustling McLean's cattle? Yes. Why should he lie like that? He knows better. Well, it don't make sense to me, Tim. Well, it does to me. It explains a lot of things I didn't understand before. For instance... You can't let them stampede that herd. That's McLean's last chance to save his ranch. Hey, you put us under arrest! McLean's last chance. Don't you believe it? I've got a hunch we're going to find things out tonight that'll pay off McLean's note. Settle the rustling in this valley for all time. Give me those blankets. Light that lamp. Yeah. 
You look through that case, and I'll try the desk. something we wanted. What is it? Bills of lading from the railroad. Do you know whether McLean shipped any cattle in March or not? Well, he hasn't shipped any cattle for the last six months. Says here he shipped 200 head in March. Well, I might be mistaken. I don't know. Did your outfit ship anything last month? Yeah, 300 head. Says 500 head on this bill of lading. What? Well, I wonder what that means. It means that your brother hasn't been rustling stock from McLean or any other rancher. I'd uh, give my right arm if you can prove that, Tim. I think I can. Now, Graves handles cattle sales on a commission basis, doesn't he? Yeah. What's to prevent him shipping an extra hundred head of your stock and holding the money when it comes back here? Why, he's been looting McLean's ranch and yours and letting you blame each other on account of that old feud. Let's hurry up with this and go find Leif. just what it owed me. You can bid up to 9500 with that. Not with my money. You're not going to lose anything, you idiot. It's just for effect. I uh, hope there's no hard feelings, John. Not at all. I only hope that someone will bid somewhere near the value of the place. Thank you, Graves. I reckon we all know why we're gathered here. And I hope you know how sort of honorary I feel doing what I'm doing. To skip all legal formalities, we're here to sell this fine old ranch to the highest bidder, lock, stock, and barrel. The Graves. It's usual in this valley to commence the bidding with a full amount of the note. Well, I bid $8,200. I'm bid $8,200. Do I hear another? I make it 84. 85. I'll go to 88, 89, 9,000. Mr. Carew's bid is about 20% of what this place is worth. You understand that it's all of this ranch for sale and not part of it, don't you? I don't seem to have much choice, John. I'm ashamed to do it. But $9,000 once, Nine thousand twice! Nine thousand dollars for the third and last time! The lion fences the dead lion for all Brennans and their friends. Wait, John! I'm calling on you, Sheriff, to prevent any useless shooting. The law still wants you for murder, Condon, and the Brennans for rustling. We'll give ourselves up after the sale, if you still want it. What's the bid so far? $9,000. $9,100. 
I need it too. How do you know that man's got that much money? Ninety-five. Ninety... Ninety-six hundred. Ninety-seven. Ten thousand. Fifteen thousand. John, it looks as though you're not coming out so bad after all. Yeah. Well, I hope you're right for Mr. McClain's sake. But how do we know this outlaw has that much money? Suppose you answer him, Condon. I haven't any money, Sheriff. I'm bidding on Mr. McLean's money. If McLean had any money, he'd have paid me himself. I'm not bidding on what he's got. I'm bidding on what you've stolen from him. I took the trouble to get these out of your office last night. You'll find that Graves owes McLean enough to pay off that note and then some. He's been robbing him blind. Sorry, you... <coughs> Wait a minute, Graves. You've got nothing on the Brennans. Those cattle you caught us with yesterday, we were bringing in for Mr. McLean to pay off that note. Condon, I sort of wish I didn't have to arrest you for the murder of Pegleg. You don't have to. Here are the numbers of those bills that were stolen off Pegleg. And you'll find the bills on Pinto Carew. Well, I didn't kill Pegleg, and you know it. No, it was Rawhide. I saw him do it. Finish your play, Carew, or drop that gun. Bring him up here. Here are the numbers, Sheriff. Just check them with those bills. Now, do you still think I killed Pegleg? Condon, I'll fight the man that says you did. Come on, you two. Now, Mr. McLean, if you're the sort of man I think you are... Don't say it, Condon. At least let me do it without being told. Day or night, son. The door of this house is wide open to you and yours. Thank you, sir. There's nothing worse than a stubborn old fool, Leif. Yes, there is, Mr. McLean. It's a stubborn young fool. <laughs> <laughs> Pardon me a minute. Where are you going? I was just going to take this horse back that I borrowed from the sheriff down San Mateo. Oh, but you're coming back, aren't you? I hadn't figured on it. But I thought you wanted to stay here in Pegleg's place, as Dad's friend. And mine. <laughs> well, if you'd hold a fellow to his promise, I... Well, there's no place I'd rather stay than right here. <laughs> 